on today's Football Finance News. Making a mockery of the Premier League? Jarring with the moral fabric of football? What have these teams been up to in the transfer window? And is it as bad as some are making out? Our top story today, the transfer window opened on the 14th of June and there's already been an unusual flurry of activity in the opening weeks. But it's not just the timing that's strange, it's the nature of the deals themselves. Specifically, the rise of swap deals, typically involving young academy products. Who's in the middle of it? Chelsea, Aston Villa, Everton, and to a lesser extent Newcastle are in the spotlight for a number of completed and reported transfer deals occurring just days before the end of June. We've seen Everton and Aston Villa swap academy products Lewis Dobbin and Tim Irogbenam. There are also reports of potential deals between Chelsea and Aston Villa involving Ian Martson, Conor Gallagher, Amari Kellyman and John Duran. On top of that, Newcastle and Everton had been linked with exchanges of Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Yanku Minte, though that particular deal appears to have cooled. So why all this activity before the 30th of June? It boils down to the Premier League's Profit and Sustainability Rules, PSR for short. June the 30th isn't just the end of the month, it's the financial year end for these clubs and the last chance to boost profits. PSR limits clubs' losses to 105 million over three years. By making these deals now, clubs can boost their bottom line just in time for the PSR calculations. For all four teams, speculation has been rife on their PSR status as the 24 financial year ends. But swap deals themselves aren't new in football. What's different this time and why are they drawing such scrutiny? Let's take the example of Dobbin and Irogbenan and see what's happening. Here we have the profit and loss, or the PL for short, for Aston Villa and Everton. Note, we're only concerned with the transfer fee itself, not wages or any other cost. On the 22nd of June, Everton confirmed they had signed Tim Irogbenan from Villa for a reported £9 million. On that day, i.e., still in this financial year, Villa can recognise a £9 million profit. Everton, on the other hand, will now spread the cost of that fee over a rogue Bonan's three-year contract. Whilst there will be a minimal amount of cost in 2024 for the last week of the year, that £9 million will hit Everton's p and over the next three years. The very next day, Lewis Dobbin moved to Villa. Fee undisclosed, but reported to be very similar. We're assuming the same £9 million for simplicity. Now Everton can recognise a £9 million profit and Villa will spread that fee over Dobbin's four-year contract. This deal allows both clubs to book a £9 million profit immediately, while spreading the purchase cost over the players' contracts. Over time, the net impact is zero, but the immediate profit recognition is crucial for PSR calculations. So, what's the issue? Well, if the transfer fee for both players was the same and no cash changes hands, why was there a fee at all? What would happen if the teams had simply swapped players with no transfer fees attached? The answer, nothing. Over the course of the players' contracts, the result would be the same. But Villa and Everton wouldn't be able to book £9 million of profit in this financial year. But is there anything wrong with this approach? The structure itself doesn't break any rules. The concern is whether these transfer fees are inflated. Critics argue that clubs could theoretically set any value they want in a swap deal to boost their profits. Valuing footballers is notoriously subjective. Age, potential, form, marketability, all these factors come into play. This subjectivity makes it very difficult for regulators to prove if a valuation is artificially inflated. Is 37.5 million a fair value for Ian Martson? What about 19.5 million for Amari Kellyman, despite only two professional appearances? While some may disagree with that valuation, it's very difficult to categorically say that it is inflated. There have been many marquee signings that have failed to deliver on the exorbitant transfer fees paid for them. The point of contention here is the mutual benefit both clubs receive. When two independent clubs negotiate a transfer, there's natural tension. One wants to sell high, the other wants to buy low. But in these swap deals, both clubs are after immediate profits and therefore both benefit from higher valuations. It's this apparent collaboration that's setting off alarm bells. The Premier League finds itself in uncharted territory. Has anyone ever faced consequences for abusing these kind of practices? 
well, we can look at one of Aston Villa's current dance partners, Juventus. Villa are looking to swap Douglas Luiz to the Bianconeri with two players coming back this way. But in the Plu Valenza scandal, Italian football authorities investigated a number of clubs, including Juventus, for artificially inflating transfer fees. The most infamous, Juve bought Arthur from Barcelona for 72 million euros, with Miralem Pjanic going the other way for 60 million. Both sides booked significant profits with only 12 million moving hands. Despite heavy scrutiny, the initial investigation collapsed because of the difficulty involved in establishing the true worth of a footballer. Juventus eventually did land in hot water though, due to new evidence, including former directors Fabio Paratici's black book, alleged to contain the club's true valuations of the players involved, as well as wiretapping Juventus executives. Juve were eventually docked points for financial irregularities and brokered an agreement with UEFA to drop out of the Conference League competition. With Aston Villa and Chelsea back in Europe this year, they won't just be under Premier League scrutiny, but UEFA as well. Having said all this, there is no evidence of anything similar happening in these current swap deals. Unless there's clear evidence of wrongdoing, it's very difficult to prove that a valuation is artificially inflated. But with a few days left in the financial window, what other moves may teams need to make to get over the PSR line? Keep up to date with football finance news to find out.